In this advanced Excel tutorial, I'm going to be showing you some of the print options that you have in Excel. And to be honest with you, I hope that you don't have to print in Excel very often. In today's world, you should be able to share your Excel files digitally, especially with tools like Dropbox and tools like Microsoft Office Online. Hopefully you won't have to print often. But if you do need to print, this tutorial will show you some of the keys, some of the tips and tricks that you'll need to be able to print effectively. And think of printing as a process, not a single step, not a single event. It's a process. And you'll see what I mean as you watch this tutorial. The tools that we're going to use when we print can be found in various places. One place where you'll find some print tools and options is here in File. When you click the File tab, it changes the view and you get to the Backstage view. And you can click Print. And this gives you a print preview, so you get a sense of what your document's going to look like once it's printed. You also get all sorts of options here. And some of these options you'll also see and find in other places in Excel. So there might be some duplication in what I show you. But there's some options here, and there's some pretty important ones. You'll notice also this link to Page Setup. That's fairly important. Now before we exit the print preview, I want you to notice how many pages this document is going to take. It's going to be 30 pages if I print it now. And I can click on this arrow to look through the pages and see their nature. I can also use this slider here at the right. So you can see those look pretty good, but as I go down the page, notice it's also going to be printing some columns in kind of a funny way. It seems like not all the data is together the way it should be. It's not organized correctly. So that's something to watch out for. Plus 30 pages, there's got to be a way to fix that. So keep watching and I'll show you some tips and tricks. So I want to exit this print preview. I could do that by clicking this arrow here or just by tapping the escape key on the keyboard and I'm out of print preview. So that's one place to look for print options. A second place to look is here in Page Layout. You'll find some good options there. And then believe it or not, down in the lower right corner, these three buttons, and also to some extent, this View Zoom, these tools in the lower right are going to be helpful as we try to get the printing set up the way we want it to be. So let's see if we can get this from 30 pages down to a more manageable amount. So let's start here on the Page Layout tab and we'll look at some of the options we have. If you remember with the Print Preview, and I want to tell you a shortcut to the Print Preview, you don't always have to click here on File. The shortcut is Control F2. So here at any point I can just hold Control and tap F2 and it will take me to the Print Preview. Okay, so if you remember there's 30 pages, let's get that down. And one way to do that is notice that this page, this print preview page, is in portrait mode. It's taller than it is wide. And if you look at my data, there's a lot of data vertically, but if you look horizontally, there are quite a few columns there. So it might be advantageous to change the orientation of the document. And I can do that here in the page layout tab and ribbon in the page setup group. So I'll click on Orientation, and I'll change it from Portrait to Landscape. Now let's do Control F2, and you can see that didn't really do much. In fact, now I have 39 pages. But in many, many cases, that will solve a lot of your issues and a lot of your problems. Okay, so what else can we do to get this data to fit so that it doesn't take up a separate page for the last two columns, basically? Well, I'm going to escape out of the print preview, and I can see right away one of the things I could change. You'll notice that my column widths, some of them may be unnecessarily wide. I don't need all of that space that you can see there for the names of these family card games and board games. So I could resize each of these columns. Now, of course, the easiest and quickest way to do that is to click and drag to select all of the columns and then to double click between any two columns that you've selected. So it could be between P and Q or between S and T or any others. I'll go with T and U and I'll double click that and it resized all of the columns down so that the data just perfectly fits within the space provided. So now if I do Control F2 to get to the print preview, 
Look, now I only have 26 pages to deal with, so that has helped tremendously. As I browse down and look at these other pages, it's still not perfect. I wish this data, that these columns fit on the other page, but at least I'm getting fewer than 30 pages. We're making some progress here. Going back to the spreadsheet, another thing you can try is let's say you don't really need all of this information. Maybe I only need to print a few months of data. If that's the case, I could just click and drag to select just the columns and just the data that I need to print. And then I just go here to the page layout tab, click print area, set print area. And so that's telling Excel, I only want to print this part of the spreadsheet. Let's try it now. If I go to file, print, and it looks like I have to click show print preview. And that may have helped a little bit, but you'll notice it still is 26 pages that it takes up. But just know that set print area can be pretty helpful. I'm gonna clear print area because I wanna say that I just wanna print all of this data, not just part of it. A few other things I could try include, I could shorten the names of the months. If I abbreviated December and January and February, that would enable me to make these columns less wide. So that's something I could try. I could also tilt these words so that they are diagonal. That is an option. To do that, I could just click to select the entire row, and then I could go to the Home tab, and in the Alignment group, here's an option to change the orientation of the text. And I could angle counterclockwise, or even go completely vertical, and that might enable me to shrink these columns down even more. But let's say you don't want to do that. What else could you try in order to get all of your data so that it prints in fewer pages? and so that there aren't pages with just two columns from the far right. A couple other things you could try is you could hide data that is not necessary. So instead of simply selecting the area you want to print and going to page layout, print area, set print area, instead of doing it that way, you could just say, you know, I don't really need the data from months and months ago. So I could click and drag on the column letters, let's say B through G, and then I could right click on any one of the column letters and choose hide, and that hides those columns. Now let's try it again. I'm gonna go to file, print, or else control F2, and now look, it does not include January through June that I hid. So that's something else you could try, but look, I still have 26 pages. So all of these steps that I'm showing you, they do help but you may need to do more than one of them. You may need to keep trying and just keep going back to print preview and then back to your spreadsheet over and over until you get that print preview the way you want it to look so that you can proceed with printing. Now let's look in the lower right corner and see what these three buttons can offer us. Right now it's in normal view, so that's what that button's for, normal view. But let's look now at page layout. When you click page layout, it shows you how your spreadsheet would work on a page. So you can see that this is where the page ends, and that's why we're having some problems. We're having some trouble because these last two columns just don't fit on the page, and so I end up having to print basically double, most likely double the number of pages because of these two little columns that are off too far to the right. So that page layout button is pretty helpful. And you'll see that name, page layout, you'll see that in other parts of Excel, like right here, page layout. But this is the page layout tab, and that's different than this page layout button. This is more of a page layout view button, right? You've got your normal view, your page layout view, and then there's another one that we'll look at in just a minute. But here in page layout view, it allows me to do some changes to this header. So right now, I have a header that's pretty much blank, right? The very top of the page, above the data, right now there's nothing really there. But I could type something in there. Maybe I could put the name of my hypothetical small business that sells these amazing games. I'll call this Amazingly Fun Games Corp. Okay, beautiful name, I like it. Now while I'm here, I wanna take a break from trying to reduce the number of pages that we're gonna print, just so that you can see some pretty cool options that you have here in the header. In addition to putting some header text, like a title or something like that, here at the top, you can also put in some things like the current date and the current time. 
and you notice I put a space between them. You don't have to do that. You could put a comma, you could put whatever you want between those or nothing between them. But now that I've got date, I'm gonna put in current time and those should automatically be updated by Excel every time I look at the spreadsheet. So that way when I print, I always know when I printed it. On the right side, I could put something like number of pages. Now all of these options I'm getting here on the design tab and pretty much only because I'm here in the header. And I got to the header, if you remember, by clicking this page layout button. Okay, so here in the upper right corner of the page, I want to click and I wanna set it up so that it says the page number. So let's look at that, page number one. And if I want to, after that, I could say page number one of the total number of pages. And that's a little confusing. It's page one of 26. Maybe I need to put between those two something like of, and maybe at the beginning, I could type the word page. So page one of, and then the total number of pages. And maybe at the end, I'll type the word pages again. Let's try that and see what it looks like. Page one of 26 pages. That's pretty good. And maybe that last word pages isn't necessary. But still, these are some nice options that you get because you click here on page layout. But again, page layout also tells us where the edge of the page is. Okay, let's go back to print preview. Let's see what it looks like. It's looking pretty good. Notice that I've got my header showing up now. If I go to page two, page three, page four, look at that. We still have the header at the top, but one thing that is missing is the explanation of what this data is. As I go to page 10 or 20, I might lose track of these column titles, right? July, August, September, all of that. So to help with that, let's go back into the spreadsheet and I'm gonna to go to the page layout tab. I should have done this earlier probably, but here in the page layout tab, look, there's an option to print titles and here it says rows to repeat at top. And then I can just select the rows to repeat. Maybe I don't need this one that says game cells. I'll just go with just row number two. I'll click okay. Now when we print preview, let's see what it looks like. As I go to the 10th page, to the 12th page, it still keeps that row across the top. So I know what the data means. At this point, you're probably understanding why I said that printing is a process. It's not just one quick event. You're gonna be going to that print preview quite a bit and then coming back to the spreadsheet. Let's look at a few other changes we could make. And many of these changes you'll find here in the page layout tab, page setup group, and you might find some of those same options here in file print with the print preview. So here you can see I could have changed the orientation this way, but instead I did it on the tab, but that's all right. Some other things I could change include the margins and I could change those here or on the tab in the page setup group. And so you can see there's a lot of duplication. I usually prefer to make a lot of the changes here just on the tab in the page setup group, but sometimes it does make sense to make those changes here in the print preview so that you can see the results immediately. So let's try that. I'm gonna go here to normal margins. And so this is talking about the margins here at the left and the top, the right, and the bottom part of the page. So if I go from normal to narrow, let's see what that does. Okay, that helped. Everything is helping a little, but if you notice, we still have 26 total pages. Okay, but I still think that's an improvement. And look, we're down to just one column that's not fitting. Each time we make a change, we're getting a little closer to what we want to do, which is to reduce the number of pages and get all of our data to fit onto just one set of pages. For this next change I wanna to try to make, I'm gonna click this back arrow again to get back into my spreadsheet, and this time I'm gonna to go to the lower right corner again and change the view. Instead of page layout, I want to see the page break preview. So if I click on that, it shows me another view that's similar in some ways to the page layout view. But this time I get some dashed lines and some solid blue lines. I'm gonna zoom in on this using this slider in the lower right so you can see that a little bit better. And so now you can see clearly page one is here. Underneath that, at the point of this dashed line, this is page two, and then it continues down to page three, etc. So notice over here, this column can't fit here as we know, and so it's being printed as page 14. Well, that's really unacceptable. And so there's a couple of options I have, and these options you'll find only if you're here on the page break preview for the most part. The first option is I could just decide, you know what, 
December, I don't need that. So I'm gonna click on this solid blue line on the right and I could drag to the left and it's just gonna omit that column. Now when I do the print preview, look what I get. Instead of 26 pages, I get 13. So this is really what I'm looking for. This is what I'd like, just a solid bunch of Excel information that I can print. But what if December is truly important and I don't wanna just leave that out? There's another option I have. I can click this dashed line and drag it to the right. And what that is doing is it's saying, no matter what, make this data fit on the page. The downside to this is it sometimes shrinks the data so much that the spreadsheet becomes almost unreadable. So let's take a look at it and see how it looks. I'll click the print preview and look, I think we've got it. I think we finally got it. Everything is fitting on just one page across and 13 pages down and that looks really good and December is included. Now, if you remember, I did hide January through June, and if I go back and unhide that, the way you would unhide is by clicking and dragging to select the part that is hidden, and then I could right-click and choose unhide, and that brings everything back. So now, of course, I'm back in the same problem I had before, but I could try it again. I could click and drag that dashed line and try to include all the data. Let's look at it this time and see if it looks acceptable. You know, even that is probably readable. So I think we're in good shape and we're down to 10 total pages. Even more data was able to fit on one particular page. At this point, I'm ready to click print and print out my spreadsheet. Unless I miss having grid lines. So you'll notice with my print previews, there are no grid lines. And in Excel, I'm used to having these grid lines, these vertical and horizontal lines that show where the cells begin and end. If I want to have those in the print, I just go here to page layout to the sheet options group and make sure that I have grid lines, print, not just view, but print. And headings, that would be the A through Y. If you want that to show up, you could print that as well. But notice what that did. That changed the equation, and now I've lost this column again. So I'm going to undo that one. And let's do a print preview, our last print preview. Look at that. It looks like a pretty good spreadsheet, probably still readable. And it's because of a lot of our changes, like going to narrow margins and using this page break preview button. I can go back now to normal, by the way. But all of those little changes that we made made it possible so that I could print and have my data show up in a way that makes sense, that looks like Excel, and is actually readable. So thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it to be useful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. Definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students and watch for another video from me at least every Monday. If you'd like to learn about some of these great board games and card games, take a look at my links in the description below and please consider supporting my YouTube channel by becoming a patron of mine through my Patreon account. And you'll find links to that in the description below.